Okay, how's it going everybody? If you are a scuba diver who ventures to the Caribbean, you will probably see this video and you would go, ah, too many lionfish, lionfish everywhere. And if this was the Caribbean, you would of course be correct because there they are an invasive species. They were introduced by humans. Whereas this is in the Philippines where I live and dive. And this is the home range of this fish. Now, whenever I see these fish, I of course know about uh, the invasion of the Caribbean and I'm starting to think what makes them an integral part of the ecosystem here and the waders there. So they're part of the Scopiniformes, the Scopinidae. The species is Pterois volitans and in a Visayan the language spoken in Negros Island where this was filmed, it's a lavong, red lionfish in English, rotfeuerfish in German. There's a separate species closely related, Pterois miles, from the Indian Ocean, which has also invaded the Caribbean. Now, the what are the features of this fish and what are the features of the Caribbean as a biogeographic region which made this invasion so successful. So one thing are the venomous spines on the dorsal fin of this fish and they will seriously injure you if you touch them and they also reduce the predation onto this fish especially in its introduced areas in the Caribbean. Now, one thing worth pointing out is that in the Philippines there's more than one species of lionfish. This is a zebra lionfish, a smaller species. So, meaning this ecological niche of um, small to medium-sized uh, ambush predators, this has been taken up by several fish species. It has probably been split up along you know, different ecological axes. So the, this of course also shows that the lionfish are involved here, we knew that. And in the Caribbean we only find these two introduced species of lionfish. These are very pretty fish. Look at these peacock-like spots on the pectoral fin of the zebra lionfish. And that was the reason why they're popular in the aquarium trade and um, they were released from aquaria. Uh, nobody really knows exactly where, uh, but uh, this probably happened in 1985, soon after a lot of these, uh, you know, this is the species again, which is an invasive in the Caribbean. A lot of these fish were found and it only took about two decades for these fish to invade the complete Caribbean, which is a short time, you know, in terms of evolution and in terms of the spread of animals, 20 plus years is a very short time. So we see that on this map, first they were in South Florida and then they moved up the US East Coast. Eventually in 2006, they jumped to the Bahamas. Then they, they reached Cuba and Hispaniola in 2009. They started reaching the Southern Caribbean too. And at this point in 2021, they've essentially invaded all of the Caribbean. Now, to come back to the properties of this fish. So I, I mentioned the dorsal fin spine, which makes this fish you know, somewhat dangerous to humans, but it also makes this fish not a very good target for, for larger predators such as groupers. So hence, you know, they, they were not immediately recognized as a good prey by these predators in the Caribbean. Another thing is that the Caribbean has been dramatically overfished and really dramatically overfished for many, many years now. So the, so the fish, the large groupers, which could keep them under control, were missing. So this again uh, is a map uh, from of the distribution in green, the Pterois volitans, which we just saw, the Pterois miles in blue, there's an invasion also going on into the Mediterranean. 
there's the Caribbean invasion and we see there's a projected invasion down the coast of South America where, uh, you know, based on water temperatures and currents, they will probably end up in the next decades. So, so this is a worldwide event. You know, we're, we're not talking of, about a small area which has been taken over here. This is a dramatic biogeographic shift. These fish have shown have been shown to uh, seriously affect native species. So both the density and the uh, species richness in certain areas was reduced because of predation of these lionfish. And yeah, so uh, we, we were discussing the reasons why they were doing so well in the Caribbean. Now we, we've mentioned the dorsal fin spines. We've mentioned that the Caribbean has been overfished and on top of that, they are they're very prolific breeders. So a female can produce tens of thousands of eggs every few weeks. So, so this fits the profile of an invasive species very well. Now here we see a map where the stressed reefs in the Caribbean are in red. The very highly stressed reefs are in pink and we see most of the Caribbean is either pink or red. Now, so the Caribbean was challenged by this invasive species when it wasn't in a very good state. Now imagine you're overworked, you haven't eaten well, you will much easier catch a cold. And I believe the same is true for ecosystems, that when they're already overfished, when there's too much coastal vandalism, which is sometimes called development, when the ecosystem is not in good shape, a powerful invasive species like this one arrives and all of a sudden it has a much easier time of spreading in that region, just like the cold virus has a much easier time to spread in your body. So this, I believe it, is what happened. You know, very venomous fish, hard to recognize, probably because of the odd swimming style for the potential predators and prey. They are prolific breeders and they entered a rather sick ecosystem. Now, this ideal profile of an invasive species, you know, small, medium-sized, somewhat of a food generalist and a prolific breeder, this is also the profile of the species which do well after mass extinction. This is a Lustrosaurus, which is the land animal which totally dominated the Earth after the end permanent mass extinction 250 million years ago. Now, same thing, it was a medium-sized food generalist. If you ask me what will be the Lystosaurus of the sixth mass extinction, which we as humans are currently engineering, it seems, I think the answer is that the lionfish, Pterois volitans, is a really good candidate. So if things don't turn a little bit more responsible, in terms of our dealings with the planet and you come back in 500 years or in a thousand years, I think it's, it's quite likely that you will see a lot of lionfish everywhere. They will dominate all oceans just like they're dominating the Caribbean now or all oceans warm enough for them, I should say. And they, they are just a, a species which does well in stressed ecosystems. I hope these thoughts were interesting and check back in a few days for the next video.